Hello everyone, welcome to the Tech and Auto Show. I'm your host Manav Sinha and it is so good to see all of you lovely people once again. In case you're new here, well, welcome. This is that one show which satisfies your hunger for both technology as well as automobiles at one place, which means why should you be watching two shows when you can watch one? This one. Now just like every time, there's a lot of action that we have to cover. So let's kick the show off by first showing you a glimpse of what you can expect over the course of the next half an hour. This week, we'll be taking a look at the latest Hyundai SUV to come to the Indian market, the Hyundai Alcazar, which is the bigger version of the Hyundai Creta. But is it really that new? Well, we'll find that out. Then we'll also take a closer look at the return of PUBG Mobile India to the Indian market in the form of Battlegrounds Mobile India. We'll see what's new and if you can really trust it. And last but not least, we'll also take you for a drive in the all-new Škoda Kushak and find out if this is going to be the new king of the SUV segment. So there you have it, all of that action will be coming your way and we're going to start off with the Hyundai Alcazar. But we cannot talk about the Hyundai Alcazar without talking about the Hyundai Creta because it was the Creta that kick-started and really made the compact SUV segment one of the most popular ones in the Indian market and have a big aspirational value. Now Hyundai is trying to replicate this formula once again in the six and seven seater segment and they're not changing a lot of things from the Creta, just making it a little bit more bigger and give it some new features as well. And is this formula really going to work? Well, that only time will tell, but we can have a good idea about it because Arjit Garg has got his hands on the car, he's driven it and here's what he has to say about it. Not more than five years ago, Hyundai changed the landscape of the sub-15 lakh SUV market by launching the Creta mid-size SUV. Fast forward to 2021 and Hyundai is now aiming at the sub-20 lakh market by launching a six- and seven-seater SUV. Meet the Hyundai Alcazar. Now Hyundai is pinning high hopes on the new Alcazar which will be placed above Creta and below Tucson in the company's product lineup. But how good is this car to drive or is it just the extended version of Creta we'll find in our first dive review. Now I'll start my review by talking about the exterior first because there's a lot of chatter on how the Alcazar looks familiar to the Creta. Now that I'm with the car, I can tell you it's nowhere similar to the Creta, barring few elements like this headlight, which is very similar to the Creta. Apart from that, the Alcazar resembles the bigger SUV from Hyundai, like the Palisade. For me, the most exciting angle to look at the SUV is from the front thanks to the dark chrome exterior signature cascading grille, the tri-beam LED headlamps and the muscular skid plates. The side, due to its lower height as compared to the rivals, snatches away the muscular theme that one might look while buying an SUV in this segment. Having said that, the 18-inch diamond cut alloys looks fabulous. The rear is the weakest angle to look at, at least for me. The whole dark chrome garnish and tail lamp design didn't excite me at all. In terms of the dimensions, while the wheelbase is the longest in the segment, the overall dimensions are at least 100mm less than the rivals. Now, unlike the exterior, the cabin of the Hyundai Alcazar strongly resembles that of the Creta, especially with this dashboard design and this large infotainment screen here. Also, this panoramic sunroof is same as the Creta. What changes inside the Hyundai Alcazar is this large 10.25-inch fully digital instrument cluster and also an additional row of seating, which we will talk in a bit. The cabin, as we said, resembles Creta in a good way and you get a familiar layout which is among the best in the industry. The dark theme with dual trim of cognac brown and black cabin adds to the premium touch. The seats are super comfortable and cushiony to hold you in the place. High seating and large glass area also elevates the overall driving experience. In terms of the features, the Alcazar gets 8-speaker Bose surround sound system, 360-degree camera, 
powered driver seat, ventilated seats, wireless charger, air purifier with inbuilt perfume among others, making it the most feature packed car in its segment. And not to forget the incredible Blue Link connectivity with 60 plus connected features. Hyundai is offering the Alcazar in two seating configurations. One is a six-seater model which gets captain type seats here and one in which I am sitting is the seven-seater model with the bench type seating. Now what Alcazar gets as a new feature is a wireless charger and also these trays that can be used for your laptop work or to eat the food. The legroom is ample in the middle and the sliding seats are a boon for taller passengers. The headroom is also generous. One commendable thing is the quality of the plastic tray which is built solidly to support heavy items like laptop. However, for the same reason, a 12 volt DC charger would have helped the cause. Now one of the biggest concerns for any of the passengers who want to ride on a 6 or 7 seater SUV is how to access the third row of seating. Now what Hyundai has done is added one touch operation in the Alcazar that makes it quite easy to get inside and out of the third seat and I'll just show you how. Here you go. Now I'm sitting at the third row of seat in the Alcazar and with the second row fully up, there's still enough legroom for me to go to a long journey. And not just that, I also get my own individual AC control button here and USB ports. Now let's be honest about the fact that most of the three row SUVs under rupees 20 lakh are at max best for seating children on the rear more seats and even the buyers know this deal. However, if you need to occasionally seat two adults for a long holiday drive, these seats would do wonders. Not just that, all the second and third row seats can be individually folded to create additional space as per your touring preferences. The boot in itself is 180 litres with all the rows up. Now when it comes to powertrain options, Hyundai has smartly played it to further distinguish the Alcazar with the Creta. What it gets is a bigger and more powerful 2-litre petrol engine while the diesel unit remains the same which is the 1.5-litre diesel motor. In terms of gearbox options, there's the 6-speed manual and the 6-speed automatic. Now the model we drove gets the new 2 litre unit producing 159 bhp and 191 newton meter of torque. The diesel on the other hand gets 115 bhp and 215 newton meter of torque. Both the engines gets both the gearbox options to choose from. In terms of mileage, Hyundai claims that the petrol unit can do around 14 km per litre while the diesel can do 18 to 20 km per litre depending on the gearbox option. Since the Alcazar is lightest in its segment, you can feel the difference while initial acceleration which is real good for a car of this size. The gearbox 6-speed manual which we drove was smooth, easy to shift and jitter-free and complemented the engine well. Now there are also drive modes and traction modes to fiddle with to alter your driving dynamics. The steering felt like a typical Hyundai like to use with little or no feedback but that helps you maneuver city traffic easily. The braking is also on point while the ride quality and NVH levels are plush. In terms of the safety, the Alcazar gets 6 airbags, blind view monitor for both sides, ABS with EBD, HAC, ESC among others. Now there are 14 variants to choose from leaving aside the optional variants, 7 each in petrol and diesel. The pricing starts at Rs 16.30 lakh for the petrol one and Rs 16.53 for the diesel one. The fully loaded top spec model is priced at Rs 20 lakh, all prices ex showroom. 
The Hyundai El Cazar is easily the most feature packed SUV you can buy in India under rupees 20 lakh. But is it really value for money? Well, at a starting price of rupees 16.3 lakh, this is at least a couple of lakh rupees more than its rivals. But having said that, it offers panoramic sunroof and a 10.25 inch infotainment system even in the base variant. So if you are in the market looking for a six or a seven seater SUV, which is loaded to the brim with features, look no further than the Hyundai El Cazar. Now moving on to the world of technology, we have to talk about some gaming. Now gaming has become really popular, especially mobile gaming in the past year and a half, thanks to the coronavirus pandemic, because well, people aren't really stepping out much as they shouldn't be either. But since they're at home, they're looking at different kinds of entertainment and mobile gaming has really seen a big spike in numbers. And one of the games that benefited the most out of all of this was PUBG Mobile. Now, it became really popular, but then we all know what happened. It was banned in India due to its Chinese linkages. But now, it has come back in a slightly different avatar. It's called Battlegrounds Mobile India. But what is it all about? Is the gameplay really different? Is it similar? Can you trust it? What's the background? Well, our in-house gaming champion, Shovik, is laying it out up next. Battlegrounds Mobile India has finally launched and that has marked the much-awaited return of PUBG Mobile in India. Well, the return had been speculated for the longest time. In fact, ever since PUBG Mobile was banned, fans around the country had been speculating of what its promoter Crafton might be doing. The company on its end had announced that it has severe ties with Tencent Gaming, which was the main channel link for PUBG Mobile. And all of that has culminated in the launch of Battlegrounds Mobile India. It has a new name and a few new cosmetic elements and of course new policies, all of which Crafton hopes is going to help it survive in India and it is going to help the company pass the ministry gauntlet in the country. But does it really take all the marks? Is it as good a game as before? Do the changes make it a bit of a compromise or is it really ignorable? Let's find out in our first experience of Battlegrounds Mobile India, which essentially is PUBG Mobile with a few changes. Now, before talking about the gameplay, we are going to talk about the changes that have come to Battlegrounds Mobile India. And in terms of the changes, some of the biggest changes have come from the policy end. In the policy, Crafton clearly specifies its data regulation and data storage laws. A recent report had in fact stated that the game is still relaying some data to a Chinese server. But now, earlier today, an IGN India report has claimed that a new update has been pushed to the game which measures a few kilobytes in size and is automatically applied to the game and makes sure that no data is further sent to Chinese servers. Crafton specifies that all in-game data for Indian users is going to be stored in India and Singapore and that makes it compliant with all data regulations of the land. Now another thing that Crafton has focused on is the child usage policy or the usage policy for underage players of the game. In this, Crafton has clearly specified that players under the age of 18 will need to provide a contact number of a parent which is going to serve as a parental control regulation of sorts. Along with that, underage players are going to be restricted in terms of the overall gaming time and how much money they can spend within the game each day. Now these come after reports on the previous edition of PUBG Mobile where many players had been reported to have either harmed themselves or others around them if they were restricted from playing the game and many had spoken out about the game's addictive nature as something that poses a risk for underage users and with this time Crafton has attempted to make changes on this end. However, the number of prompts that you will be served are quite a few within the game where you will be reportedly asked from time to time to take breaks while playing the game and for some that might seem a little annoying but on the overall terms it serves as a way for the developers to pitch that anybody playing the game should take a break and make sure that do not get too addicted to the overall game.
In terms of the cosmetic changes, the real big change is that while previously if you shoot down an enemy, they would have just simply bled, which is the natural course of action. In the new title in Battlegrounds Mobile India, if you shoot an enemy, they are going to blow up in a smithereen of green feathers. You can change the color green to yellow if that's what you'd prefer and that's pretty much the biggest graphic change per se. The other change is that the game clearly states multiple times when you start a round and when you open the game that this is a simulation which is situated in the virtual world which is yet again something that Crafttown has attempted in an attempt to make sure that it caters to the underage gamers and make sure that it caters to reports about how it affects the psyche of underage players who might take the game for being too real. Now these are the main cosmetic attempts and cosmetic elements and apart from that the game has pretty much remained the same. It is at the end of the day PUBG Mobile at heart, it has retained its 5 maps and about a dozen game modes including Team Deathmatch and the classic Battle Royale of course and all of that has kept the game to what it was. You of course get the high definition graphics packs with the game as well and an Ultra HD graphics mode is also prompted as coming soon all of which sums up that this is what it was previously. When you set up the game PUBG Mobile will allow you to port the previous data to the new Battlegrounds Mobile India although you can do this only once and it is only here that the game will once ping a Chinese data server to port your data from there to here and that is about it. So to sum up, does it signify a successful return for the game in the country? In a way, yes, because the game has retained exactly what it was and that is something that hardcore players of PUBG Mobile aka Battlegrounds Mobile India will really like. On overall terms, except for these few cosmetic elements, the game has remained the same and it can be hardly faulted for that. However, it remains to be seen if the changes that it has made is enough to pass the Ministry Gauntlet and that is something that we'll only be able to see in the days to come. Welcome back, you're watching the Tekken Auto Show and I'm your host Manav Sinha. Now, the Volkswagen Group is giving another attempt, a full-blown attempt at the Indian market and this time around Skoda, a brand that Volkswagen owns, will be the one that will be spearheading this India 2.0 attempt. Now, Skoda's first full-blown attempt at the Indian market comes in the form of the Skoda Kyushak. Now, Kyushak in Sanskrit means king and this is Skoda's SUV that is made for the Indian market. So by the looks of it, they're putting in a lot of effort in order to make this the new king of this segment. But how have they fared? Well, Anirudh got his hands on the car and he's telling us more about it up next. Look at that, we are out and we are shooting again and this time it's a new entrant in the India's largely contested mid-size SUV segment. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Škoda Kushak and it will take on the likes of some of the most popular offerings like the Hyundai Creta and the Kia Seltos in India. So under this rather beautiful weather, we will determine two things. Whether it has the firepower to go against the segment leaders and whether it really lives up to its name of being an emperor. Now, in terms of visuals, the car shares quite a lot of resemblance with the Vision Iron concept that we saw at the Auto Expo in Delhi. Paying homage to the Czech glass-making roots, a lot of the elements on the outside take inspiration from crystals. At the front, you get fully LED headlamps that are flanked by LED DRLs that gives the car a very aggressive stance. This is accentuated even more with the large grille that sits in between them. At the back, the car gets inverted L tail lamps that again are very crystalline with sharp edges. Speaking of which, there are plenty of creases and cuts at the back, which we believe is tastefully done without a hint of looking too busy. Now, the one word that comes into your mind when you step inside the cabin of the Skoda Kushak is premium. You get piano black finish and textured materials on the dashboard. You get a semi digital instrument cluster that is neatly laid out and an HD touchscreen infotainment system that works like a charm. The infotainment system comes with connectivity features including Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The touch response is quite dynamic and doesn't show any hints of lag. 
while the instrument cluster of the car is fairly neat it does miss out on a fully digital unit now on the basis of customer research Skoda has done away with any sort of buttons and knobs for its ac controls instead there is a soft touch panel that in our opinion have two small off touch buttons that are a little distracting to use while driving the car comes with ample of features including a six speaker Skoda music system wireless phone charging and ventilated seats at the front the car gets an electric sunroof but misses out on a panoramic one which will be seen on the upcoming Volkswagen Tiguan. Now the rear is where your family might spend their most of the time and all in all it's a good place to be. Now for reference I am 5 foot 6 and as you can see there is plenty of knee room to stretch out my legs. There is plenty of headroom as well. Uh, anyone who measures up to 6 feet is going to be okay. Anyone who measures above that is going to be a little cramped up. Now Skoda has done a commendable job in flattening out the central tunnel which means three passengers can be seated comfortably and there are a lot of practicality elements as well. You get two rear AC vents that are placed above C-type charging ports. You get a central armrest that has cup holders as well. Now the car that we got to drive was the top rung style variant that comes with a 1.5 litre TSI engine that outputs 150 PS and 250 Nm of torque. While we drove the slick shifting 7-speed DSG, the car also gets a 6-speed manual transmission. The engine, to say the least, is of a very rev-happy nature that finds a common ground between a city-oriented practical one and a performance-oriented one that puts a grin on your face. While the 7-speed DSG transmission did have a slight rubber band effect at slow speeds, this was completely flattened out once the car picked up momentum. Apart from the 1.5 litre unit, there is also a 1 litre DSI engine that delivers 115 PS and 178 Newton meters of torque. And for this, you can choose between a 6-speed manual and a 6-speed automatic transmission. In terms of driving comfort, the car gets suspensions that are set up on slightly stiffer side. However, at high speeds, even deeper undulations on the road went unnoticed. The steering of the Kushak is on the lighter side. While this does make the daily city commutes an easy affair, it falls short in confidence during spirited driving that involves sharp turns at high speeds. Now the Skoda Kushak comes with disc brakes at the front but drum brakes at the rear. On the off chance that this might sound inadequate, it is quite safe to say that the car had ample of stopping power that inspires confidence. For the Kushak, Skoda has put safety quite high on its priority list. The car gets 6 airbags and safety features like multi-collision braking system, a tyre pressure monitoring system and optional hill hold control. It also gets isofix anchors and top tether anchor points to safely secure child seats, automatic rain sensing wipers along with sensors and a rear view camera. So in conclusion, it's quite safe to say that the competition in the mid-size SUV segment just got a whole lot interesting. The Skoda Kushak packs enough firepower to take on its segment leaders. And not only that, with the 95% localization, it means that Skoda can price this car very aggressively. Now we expect the car to fall in the ballpark of somewhere between 10 to 15 lakhs. And if that is something that you can afford, then there is no reason to look away from this. And with that, we've come to the end of this edition of the Tech and Auto Show. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If there's anything you have to say, anything you want us to cover, or simply want to have a conversation with any of us, well, Twitter is the place to go to. If it's about technology, tweet out to us at News18Tech. If it's about automobiles, tweet out to us at News18Auto. And remember, by logging on to News18.com, you can read up more on both these industries. Now, before I let you go, I have a small request to make. Yes, the coronavirus cases have gone down over the past few days, but the virus has not gone away. That means we need to continue to stay responsible. Step out only if it's absolutely necessary. Double up on your masks if you can. Always wear a mask, sanitize your hands, maintain social distancing and get vaccinated whenever possible. You see, if we stay responsible, we'll get out of this way faster than any of us can imagine. So let's come together and stay safe. Having said that, that's about all for today. I'll catch you same time next week only on CNN News 18.